Well, good morning. It's great to be together again as we worship our Lord and Savior. We are going to be finishing the series of No One, our identity in Christ today. And so today we're going to look at how we have been identified, how we were identified, and now how we are identified. And so that will be uh, the, the thought of our message. That will be the theme that you're going to hear throughout today's worship service. So as we go through, we pray that the Holy Spirit just opens our hearts, opens our minds, so we can hear what God has to tell us. And it's a great day to be together. And so this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice, and we're glad in it. We're going to start today's service, though, with an opening responsive psalm. It's Psalm 66, and it begins at the 8th verse. Bless, O God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crashing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you. That which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Would you join me in prayer? God of steadfast love and mercy, remind us that in Jesus Christ everything has become new. For far too often things seem as they have always been. Old habits die hard, difficult situations linger, failures from our past linger. We look for your promise of newness, but cannot see it. Speak to us again of your new creation. Open our eyes to its presence in our lives. Call us forth to claim this newness, that we may be healed and made whole. We ask this in your name. Amen.
come together today celebrating that love that the Savior has for us. And so we begin this day as we do every day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We take a few moments for confession. And we lift up to our Lord those things in our hearts that we know we've done and those things that we don't know that we've done. So we just take a few moments of, of just time of, of quiet confession, and then we'll pray together. Oh God, we have sinned against you. We have spoken against you and your servant Jesus. We have uttered lies. We have cursed you and others. We have said vulgar things. We have been consumed by doubt. We have been bitten with the venom of hatred in our world. We have oppressed the helpless. We have been intolerant of others. We have delighted in violence. We have spent money foolishly. Please, Lord God, forgive us our transgressions. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, in your holy name. Amen. Well, Almighty God has had mercy upon us and has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of the Word. It is my joy today to announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the hymn of praise as we sing him, the, the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Beginning at the 15th verse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. 
In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Well, well, like I said before, we are going to be finishing up uh, this three weeks series on the theme uh, being known, our identity. And when I was uh, preparing for today, I, I kept thinking of one of the greatest classic rock bands ever, at, at least in my opinion. It's the rock band, The Who. And in 1978, the Who released an amazing hit. In 1978, they released the song, Who Are You? Now, if you're like me, every time you hear that, or you think of The Who, your mind either said or you sung, Who, 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 right? I did, and I still do, all the time. But the chorus is absolutely amazing because it says, well, who are you? I, I really want to know. Tell me who you are because I really want to know. Isn't, isn't that the way we are today? Anytime we see someone or anybody we knew we meet, we want to know all about them. I've been to many conferences and workshops where they, they sit us at tables or, or they, they put us in, in, in with partners and, and we have to answer that big question, who are you? Tell that person or those people who you are. When we do that, we usually start with their name, maybe talk a little bit about our family, what, what city we're from or if we're from a different state, share that. Then maybe we'll talk about our jobs. And if we want to get adventurous, then we will get into our accomplishments. All these things to answer that deep question. Who are you? Well, our text for today's message comes from the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And when we read this, you're going to see that question being answered. That, that deep underlying question of, of who we are. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What well, did you catch it? Did you catch the answer of who we are? But really, before we can get into, into that answer, we need to understand that first question that was there of who we were. You see, we were not as these verses or this, this text said. We were, we were not compelled to love. And in fact, we were, we were living for ourselves. We were sinners. Sinners who deserved nothing but God's punishment. We, we were thankless. We were rebellious. We were ruthless. We deserved nothing good. At least nothing good 
in eternity. That is who we were. And knowing that, now we can look at who we are. Because that is the question. Who are you? Well, we can, we can obviously see that we are a sinner turned saint because of Christ's love and because of that love, we too are compelled to love. We are a redeemed child of God. We have been bought by the precious blood of Christ. We've been washed by the waters of baptism. And in that washing, we have been forgiven. We have been named innocent. We are a new you. We are a new creation because we have been reconciled to God. Reconciled. We, we've been restored in this relationship. We, we have, are, are no longer separated from Him. I want to read a part of this scripture passage again. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. You, you see, we try to turn this all around when we think of being reconciled to God. We think we have to do it. But did you notice what Scripture is saying? What we, what we read, it says, all this is from God. God is doing the reconciling. We are the object. We are the ones being reconciled. There is no way that we on our own could have repaired this broken relationship between God and us. Only God can. And that is why there's Jesus. That is why there's this good news of Jesus. Because we were saved through Jesus. He is the, the one that stood between us and Satan. He is the, the one that repaired our relationship with our Father. All the, the, this reconciliation, just being restored, this, this restoration in ourselves, it makes us a new creation. Well, I know that we will not forget who we were. This, our sinful nature constantly reminds us of that. But we know who we are. See, we are not identified by what we were. We are identified by who we are. We are this new creation. We are ones that have been reconciled. We have been ones that have been redeemed and been restored through Jesus Christ. We are changed by his love. We are changed by this love of Christ. And that should motivate us, that, that, that should compel us, that should drive us to live as this new creation, to be this new creation that God has made us to be. That should drive us to go and be ambassadors so that others will also know that they are new creations through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, you know who you are. So whenever you hear that song by the who, you can answer. Who are you? I'm a new creation. So be who you are. Live who you are. Share who you are. Because you are his. You are a redeemed child. You are a people belonging to God. You are a new creation. And that's how we are identified. Amen.
confess our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you. Lord, we try to do it ourselves. We try to try to love the way we want to love. We try to live the way we want to live. But that's who we were. Because of the great love that you have given us. Through Jesus Christ, we are now reconciled to you. We are no longer separated. Thank you for doing that, Lord, for us. Thank you for making us a new creation. So that is now who we are. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, we give you praise for that. that. We do not have to do this on our own. But the work of our Savior Jesus, his death, his resurrection, has won that for us. Lord, today we lift up the family of Pastor Terry Reber as they grieve the loss of him. Lord, we celebrate the ministry that he had, the, the work that he did, those lives that he, he, he touched, the opportunities he, he had to, to, to share Jesus to the world. We thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for his ministry for his life. Now, Lord, wrap your arms around them. Let them know that you are there and you are carrying them through. And we rejoice and we long for the day when we are all together with you in eternal glory. Heavenly Father, we also lift up those that are constantly working still to, to keep everyone safe. We thank you for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders. We thank you for all those essential workers. We thank you that um, for, for those that are, are serving food. We thank you for those that are, are stocking. We, th we thank you for those that are, are, are working to help us, to give us some of the, the uh, what we call normalcy back. Lord, we we know this is all in your hands, and we celebrate that. Continue to be with our governor, continue to be with our president, those that, that are making decisions, Lord, we ask that you walk with them. We ask that you give them a, a calming heart, an open mind, that the decisions that they make will be pleasing to you. And Lord, be with those that are, are grumbling, that are complaining. Help us, Lord, to have uh, an open mind and open heart. Help us to pray for our leadership. Help us to not make, make wrong words or, or say things that we will regret. Lord, just, just help us turn to you and just look at what you have already done. The beauty of your creation is all around us, Lord. We, we, we can rejoice in that each and every day. All these things, Lord, we would bring to you as we pray that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now you know who you are. You are a new creation. And so we rejoice in that and we get to go and live 
as that is that's what God has made us to be. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to close with the song, Jesus is Silent. his new creation. Amen.